I mean, it, listen, it we're talking work. about practice. Playoffs? What are talking about? Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Hello? You play to win the game. I am very excited to talk about sports. Hey everybody, Nick here with the Wednesday Night Sports Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at AF Wednesday. It is time for our second edition of Wednesday Night Sports Podcast, which is canon of the Wednesday Night AF Podcast universe. So we are counting this as episode 7. Logan, Alex, and I had a lot of fun recording last week's episode. So why not do it again? I am joined by the Hickory Axe murderer himself, Logan. How's it going, Logan? And are you excited for this bonus episode this week? Wednesday Night Sports Podcast. I am absolutely drugged by Nick, but all I want to do is just talk about more sport. Also, Alex, what the hell, man? What are you still doing here? Wednesday Night Sports Podcast. Well, you uh, you approached me and you said, Alex, we need your experience and uh, and powerful brain your powerful basketball brain I to like come it. And, and tell us about how it works. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, we'll go ahead and start talking this week about free agents in the NFL. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the biggest news this week, Antonio Brown to the homeless Raiders, formerly of Oakland. They're homeless now. If you didn't know They're in answer. Oakland again. Yeah. Um, so... Obviously, a lot of people feel like that the Steelers got ripped off um, trading a second round, fourth round draft pick to the Raiders. Raiders did not give up one of their three first round picks to the Steelers. Was this a good trade? I I think it works out for both parties. And the reason I say that is because the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, they, they got rid of extra baggage being Antonio Brown, obviously. He doesn't want to be there. They don't want him there. Um, That's just a bad mixture altogether. They they get to get some extra draft picks, and they get to work on their future of who's going to be the next guy beside Juju. I personally hope it's Golden Tate, being a Detroit Lions fan. That guy's awesome. Um, I think he would bring some uh, great play to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's, He's He's not selfish at all. He's a team guy. When uh, when Matt Stafford would throw it around to these other receivers, Tate had no issue with it whatsoever. Um, I think it's a great deal for them. I think it's a great deal for Oakland because they get to keep their um, three first-round draft picks, and they also get Antonio Brown. While there, he is a head case at times, when he's not, he's still one of the top three wide receivers in the league. Um what I don't get is that they let Khalil Mack walk over money issues, but they somehow still have this kind of money to throw at Antonio Brown. And that is that is a downside of all this is why. Um, when realistically, if you look at it, what could have been if they go to – well, I guess they wouldn't have been able to resign Khalil Mack. I mean, they wouldn't have been able to trade for Antonio Brown, I guess, if they still had Khalil, but – I'm taking right. Khalil all day over Antonio. Look what Khalil did to help the Chicago Bears. I mean, and he's young. Dude himself just turned around the whole team. It felt like. Yeah, too bad he wasn't able to uh, turn around that double doink. <laughs> yep. Um, man. but kickers, man. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but <laughs> outside people too, apparently. <laughs> outside of that, um. I am excited for the future of the Steelers, and I have to ask this question. Is Derek Carr the guy for Antonio Brown to throw to, or do they have to get somebody else? He's got one shot. This is his year. If they do well, he stays. If he don't, he's gone. A rookie comes in. It's um, You got one shot, man. If you can't do it with an Antonio Brown, you're... Um, you're probably cooked. Mom spaghetti. And I think they will. They will have a rookie because uh, it seems like they're setting themselves up to make a splash when they move to Las Vegas. Like they're going to have the draft there the first year that they're in town. 
and I think that they're going to continue to stockpile these draft picks, uh, not just for this coming draft, but for the next draft, and try and make it an exciting experience for the people of Las Vegas. Yeah, because that's what um, Las Vegas is about, is experiences. And I say that when you have people dressed up as Olaf from Frozen, and the <laughs> their costumes look like they just rolled around in just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Like the New York Times uh, or Times Square uh, Spider Man. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, these homeless raiders. I'm going to call them the homeless raiders from now on. They definitely have to make a splash in Las Vegas, or they're going to get evicted, and they're going to end up having to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> that uh, first impression is always the best. Right. Um. So yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, bigger news blockbuster odell beckham jr got traded from the new york giants to the cleveland browns i am david after dentist about this trade you know what i'm saying is this real life or is is this just fantasy i just i can't believe it i i just I, i heard rumors all week but i didn't really believe it it's like one of where like you're in a forum or you know reddit to, to, you guys are real big reddit guys um where people just post rumors and you're like and it happened like and it happened like while i was at the olive garden i like, couldn't believe it like dave Meltzer, the dave Meltzer <laughs> of uh football like darren Ravel. yes <laughs> Uh, and- <laughs> when you say you were at the Olive Garden, it's just like any amazing piece of news can start with that. Well, I was at the Olive Garden, and they said that the International Space Station exploded. <laughs> or, like, I, I'm from Texas, kind of, uh, and so our version of that would be like, well, I was at the Cracker Barrel, and uh, they told me that apparently <laughs> there's no uh, – Chicago's just gone. <laughs> Fun fact, I guess this is, I guess it is fun. Um, Every time (laughs) that I went to the Olive Garden, something noteworthy has happened sports-wise. Right before the fell, the, uh, not the fell Mary, the, um, the play last year with the Vikings and the Saints where Diggs caught The Minnesota Miracle? The Minnesota Miracle. I ate the Olive Garden right before, (laughs) right before the Chicago Bears doing those two field goals against the Eagles. You were at Olive Garden for that? Yes. And I'm sure there's probably other countless, but that's what comes to my mind. That's wacky. Were you at the Olive Garden when the center snapped the ball over Peyton Manning's head? No. At the start of the Super Bowl? I was at my house. (laughs) Any given Sunday at the Hickory, North Carolina Olive Garden. Fun, fun fact about restaurants, by the way. Every time me and Nick together eat out back at that weekend. Yeah, I don't know why. It's always it's Outback. It's just a ritual. I like to order Outback, but I like to order it delivery, and I only get three Bloomin' Onions because I love the packaging that it comes in, but they always forget the sauce. Oh, he my God. He, he just looks at the packaging. Yeah, and I don't eat it. it that shit's disgusting. Um... So yeah, with Odell Beckham Jr., does this make the Browns a perennial contender for the Super Bowl? I say no doubt about it. Their defense has been impressive. They were kind of just – they have Jarvis Landry, but I feel like um, – And Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Yeah. Uh, who else? They added Kareem Hunt. People forget about that. Um, they just – No, didn't the Redskins – was it really the the Browns yeah, got Kareem yeah, Hunt? Yeah. yeah, the Browns picked up. But he's not the... going to be available until like week 10. Right, Who right. was the other guy that I thought of that the Redskins definitely picked this guy up? Uh, they picked up the other guy that beat somebody. A San, yeah, the San domestic Francisco. violence guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, but regardless, regardless of Kareem Hunt's there or not, like Nick Chubb's good. Um, Baker, Baker Mayfield, Mayfield. all the weapons now. That's unbelievable. They're going to win their division. I'm okay with that. As a Steelers fan, I'm totally okay with that. 
Like the Browns have been the Steelers so bad. Need to relax like okay. for a bit. I'm not even uh, as uh, Ron Burgundy would say from Anchorman. I'm not even man. I'm impressed. I I feel like you're at the point where like this. You know the Steelers rebuild is coming. Yeah. And it's a time for another team to do it. And I feel like the Cleveland's been so bad that you're at the point where it's just like I'm fine with Cleveland doing it, not Cle- uh not Cincinnati or Pittsburgh. I, I mean Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. And there were yeah, talks... especially after Baltimore gave up their uh, their playoff dragon to the Broncos. Right. And then also the fact that um Le'Veon Bell might go to the Ravens. Right. The rumors are floating. We might have some breaking news at some point. Podcast. Yeah. Um hopefully that's not the case. I have reading that uh He's now being offered between eleven and twelve million dollars, compared to what the Steelers were offering him at seventeen million. I think it's a pretty big drop off, and I think he's basically uh, kicking himself in the ass. Right. Also, I think just as big, big as news is um, that the Browns have a possibility, and they're very close to landing all pro safety Earl Thomas from the Seattle Seahawks. Granted, he's a little bit older now, um, but this guy can still go. He's uh, and he actually ain't even that old. He's twenty nine years old, but he's been one of the best safeties of the past decade. Okay, I does mean, he does he get the money that he he wanted from the Seahawks? I don't know. Um, he, he might it might be a point where he's like in the middle, where he's like, I'll take a good a good contract, but I want to win and be a part of something special too. Um, the Browns are going to be special. Yeah, I mean, he's this is something. What kind of special? <laughs> Super duper special. I feel like this is something like monumental. Like if the Browns won the Super Bowl, like that would be pretty legendary. Like I feel like them and the Lions and like teams like that are just like teams where it'd be like monumental if they won. Kind of like when the Saints finally won the Super Bowl. Like in the 2000s, because there was a point where the mm-hmm. Saints were so bad and the fans were in paper bags over their heads, like saying the ain't. Like it would be a big deal if they won the Super Bowl. The Browns turning it around the way after having just an absolute dumpster fire of a situation in Cleveland, uh, I'd be really proud for them. The, the, the Browns are my number two team to root for, and I would love to see them have more success, but not even just as a fan, but as like. A lover of sports, I want to see Cleveland have that. How can you not root for them? I feel like it's one of those situations where, like, when the Chicago Cubs finally won the World Series a few years ago, like, you, pretty much everybody in the world was pulling for them, except for, like, St. Louis Cardinals fans. Right. Like, <laughs> like, that was just one of those situations where it was just like, that was pretty cool. Like to see somebody that's been a a city that's been dying for like a baseball champion finally win, like seeing Cleveland finally get a football champion. That would be awesome. Yeah. LeBron was able to give them a championship in the first time. And what? 57 years, something like that. Right. And what are they going to do if they win football? Oh my God. The thing is that Cleveland is so cares so much more about football than they do about basketball that uh, Baker Mayfield is almost as well loved as LeBron James, and he's only been there for a year. Yeah, right, right. I mean, Cleveland loves the Browns. They were devastated when they went to Baltimore in the nineties. Um, and then also, uh, Stephen Nelson from the Chiefs uh, was signed by the Steelers. I have no idea who that is. Uh, he is a defensive <laughs> player. I think he is secondary. What if, what what do we think about the the Giants now? Where do they go? I mean, obviously into the trash can. Obviously, they're going into a giant rebuild now. But why are you <laughs> keeping Eli Manning though at this point if you're not even going to keep Odell Beckham? So was Ben McAdoo right all along to bench Eli last year? Yes. And then they just promptly fired him and acted like that he was the problem and not Eli Manning. I'm sure I he was part of the problem. Of three lie. What? You guys are familiar with the legend of three lie? No. Uh, he's going to win another Super Bowl. 
but it's not going to be with the Giants. Who's it going to be? Steelers. Broncos. Oh, Broncos. Oh, he's going to go his brother's route. Oh it is goodness. required that any quarterback that needs to ha- put the final nail on their legacy has to go to Denver. Yeah. John Elway's home for aging quarterbacks. It's a retirement community. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, moving on. Uh, college basketball. Tournament week is here. Champ, sorry. Champ week is here for the conference uh, tournaments. Um, already some upsets. Uh, Murray State going in. And uh, Gonzaga losing their championship game to St. Mary's. And I'm pretty sure I called that last week. Not going to lie. Uh, and then you had Northeastern. Uh, going over Hofstra. Uh, I'm pretty sure I picked Hofstra uh, while Logan picked uh, Northeastern. So good on him for that. Um, Unfortunately, Troy, with a heartbreaking loss to App State. Yeah. So, Alex, have you picked a new team? I was going to say Lipscomb, but they lost. Yeah, unfortunately. But of those that have already punched in their ticket. Uh, ticket puncher? Yes. My, my ticket puncher of the week is the Fairly Dickinson Knights. You know, I was I was actually just looking at that. So, it, I'm glad you picked that team. And there, there are no Oakland Golden Grizzlies. We'll say that. Though, quite possibly. But are they Northeastern Huskies? Um, no, because... Very good boys. <laughs> Because they have uh, not as good a record. I mean, it was only two games, but, you know, I would say uh, Colonial is probably a better league than the Northeast. Um, It's tough. I want to say Northeastern Huskies because their leading scorer's name is Vasa Pusica, but I think I'm going (laughs) to stick with Fairleigh Dickinson. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, So we'll go ahead and start with the biggest tournament this week, the ACC. Yeah, you know me. Um, <laughs> who do y'all have in the championship on Sunday or Saturday? Sorry, Saturday now, which is weird because the ACC title was on Sunday for years. Yeah, that's what threw me off. Um, I had my bracket pulled up here, and then. For some reason, stuff started playing in the background that started annoying me, so I had to go find another bracket. <laughs> um, I um, my finals, I think, is going to be Virginia, which and, is a given. Yeah, I feel like they got an easier part of the bracket. Um, they're going to play the winner of Carolina and Duke, and I I'm in a split I'm in a split situation. I think Carolina wins to go play Virginia if Duke doesn't have zion and if zion plays i think duke will win um so i'm gonna say i'm gonna split it both ways however that happens depending on zion i don't think anybody's beaten virginia i think they're the best team in the nation really you Uh, think you think uva is gonna beat duke in the and here's here's why i say that because it's hard to beat a team three times I think at this point Virginia will know what they got to do to beat Duke, and I think they will do it and win the ACC tournament and take a load of momentum into the NCAA tournament as the number one overall seed. I hope I just gave you goosebumps by saying that. Oh, you did, <laughs> and it brings me nightmares of last year. <laughs> just don't play a team from Baltimore in the first round, and you'll be okay. Yeah, um, and hopefully, if UMBC wins their conference tournament um hopefully the selection committee doesn't say you know what bring big ratings is if we had another rematch of that (laughs) right and um umb umbc speaking of them did win today and will play for a spot in the tourney on saturday morning at 11 a.m weird time to have a championship in the morning but they will play vermont for a spot at the ncaa tournament hopefully vermont wins 
<laughs> I don't think UMBC, UMBC will be a 16 seed. They um they are 21 and 12, so they got a little bit better record than they did last year going into that. So, um, and if you remember, because Virginia was number one overall seed, like the two worst 16 seeds play in a play-in game to play, um, Virginia last year but i just i don't see a scenario where that happens we may not see that ever happen again it was just one of those times where if virginia plays umbc a hundred times umbc probably wins like two or three at the most right it was just they got uh, they got a good shooting night and virginia had one of their worst nights of the whole year at the worst time right um so yeah for me I got UVA UNC with UVA winning. I don't see UVA beating Duke, especially with Zion. Uh, UVA would have to be on par with their team that had uh, the likes of Anthony Gill, uh, Brogdon, uh, London Parentes. I'm just telling you right now, that's not going to happen. Um, so you're kind of, you're kind of in the situation like me pending Zion. Well, even I feel like even with Zion, UVA probably loses, and that's okay because I think we still take um, the overall number one seed. With Gonzaga losing, you're probably in good shape. The only way that you don't take a number one overall seed would be if you somehow lost to a bad team early in the tournament like Clemson or somebody. Right, and we have been prone to losing in the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament. And I will say, the ACC is so tough that any of these teams like Clemson, NC State and stuff, if they were in another conference, they would pro- they would do much better. This conference is so tough. There might be 10 or 11 teams getting in the tournament. Yeah, and the ACC is the murderer's row. Right, huh. so... So by no means do I mean Clemson is bad. They're actually well, they're a bubble team. team. They're a bubble right. team this year. And if they were in the SEC, they'd be up there competing for the conference championship. Right. So Alex, who do you yeah. who do you have winning the ACC tournament? This Tar Heels. Week? UNC. Do you think Good man? Do you think the championship will end up being between UNC and UVA, or do you think it'll be UNC and somebody? I else? think it's uh, Tar Heels versus Miami of Florida. They. Okay. Um, they won today. Miami could make a run. They it's going to be a tough road, but um, they're they're the in thing this is thing. like whichever Miami teams get knocked out, they combine into a super team, right? So like oh, Miami of Ohio <laughs> has already lost, so they get their players go to Miami of Florida, and if Miami of like California loses, they combine their team with Miami of Maryland. Right, right, and that's why the Florida Gators won just with Joe Kim Noah and stuff in the mid 2000s they combined going to the tournament there you go it's like Voltron so I think it's, it's Tar Heels versus Voltron Miami All right. yes and that's why they were so good at football in the early 2000s I, I like it <laughs> um, move on to Atlantic 10 uh, this is kind of bias uh, with me being a homer for the Atlantic 10 scenes so though two of the Atlantic 10 teams are in my city. Oh. Yes. Um, Is the Atlantic 10 a conference? Yes. Um, How many teams are there? 14. Again? (laughs) Yes, again. (laughs) The Atlantic 14. Um, VCU is the number one seed. Uh, they are a Virginia team, Richmond, Virginia. They have made it to the Final Four uh, in 2011. Um, I have VCU and uh, Davidson. Steph Curry's alma mater. Yeah, making it to the championship with VCU going all the way, and they will probably get a eight seed. I am going to go with VCU winning in Barclays Center over the Dayton Flyers, the number three seed. Okay. Alex? 
Uh, it's tough for me. It's between uh, GW, uh, George W, W, <laughs> and Richmond because they have a spider as their logo, <laughs> which to me means that they have the power of all of the Spider Reverse Spider Men. But I think Bush Two takes it. Okay, all right. That is a very good pick, and I think if George W. wins, they were a good chance to get that 16th seed to play a possible Virginia team. Yeah, and will George W. be able to knock off the Cavs next week? It'll be very interesting. Lord, if that happens, Tony Bennett's getting fired. <laughs> but what's weird is George W. Their logo looks like George Washington, which makes no sense. Well. <laughs> Uh, GW stands for George Washington University. No, don't tell me that. We're going to keep it George W because that's right. the best thing I've ever okay. heard. Right. George W. By the way, Richmond is the worst of two Richmond teams in the Atlantic 10. Uh, VCU obviously being the better team. And they have all the spider Man. Who does the other Richmond team have? The whole Avengers? Rams. They're the Rams. The football Rams? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> do you remember? Um, do you remember a weird period where, like, in the '90s, where Richmond, like, or maybe early 2000s, where like they actually made a run one time in the tournament? I think like, they made it to the Sixth. Elite Eight once. Yeah. Uh, the year that VCU made it to the Final Four, they actually made it to the Sweet 16, where they were in the same uh bracket as VCU. Um. What's funny is Richmond was an eight seed, uh, pretty sure. VCU was a twelve seed. It was That's either right, eleven or twelve seed. It was a really big deal when they played. Oh yeah, there were a lot of riots in in Richmond. Uh, none for Richmond, more so for VCU making it all the way to the final four. And then there was a losing riot after they lost. That was. That was a weird Final Four, looking back on it in 2011, because you had the eight-seeded um, Butler Bulldogs who went to the national title and lost to Duke. They um, oh, I know they got... about that game. They missed the last-second buzzer beater uh, to beat Duke that year. Yes, yes, it was one of the best games I've ever seen in a national championship. Um, but they came back the next year with no Gordon Hayward and got back to the Final Four. They beat VCU, who was 11 seed, and it. VCU had to play that play-in game to get there. And then on the opposite side, you had number four seed Kentucky and a number three seed Connecticut, um, with Connecticut winning the whole thing with Kimball Walker going on just a tear in the tournament. Um, that was one of the odder Final Fours. Like, there was no no twos or ones in the t- uh, Final Four. I never knew that Gordon Hayward was a white guy. <laughs> he, um, yeah, and he was... Drafted by Utah, of all places, to begin his career. Is nobody confused as to how I knew about that game? Um, I think you I mentioned that... something earlier about your connection to Butler. Somebody I went to Butler. Oh, that they spoils just... it. I, I googled college basketball, and it brought up a YouTube video about that missed that missed shot. Yeah, I think and I watched it, and it was the research that I did for this week. And the one thing that I looked up came up on the podcast so don't tell me i'm not amazing at research (laughs) sb nation i think actually produced that in the last week yeah that is the video that i watched because i did rewind (laughs) moving on to the sec southern eastern conference um this is kind of a conference that i don't know it has good conference tournaments but outside of that, it's not really that exciting right now. Uh, LSU somehow is number one with uh, Will Wade, uh, former VCU head coach, um, just got recently suspended for possibly recruiting players illegally. <laughs> so, yeah, um, he is out. Uh, Tennessee, which was... Uh, the number one for a while uh, is now number three. Well, they, they're they still in the top ten, but they're a number three seed in this SEC tournament. 
uh, Kentucky being number two. Kentucky, sorry, Kentucky last year wowed me, especially Gabriel. I thought Gabriel was amazing last year. Oh yes. Um, so I'm expecting a repeat of last year. I think UK or I think Kentucky takes it. Coach Coach Calipari always he always has young guys on the team, but by the time tournament time gets here, he knows how to turn them around. He's kind of like a Tom Izzo type coach. Um, I, I think the I think LSU is overrated. Um, I do see them going to the conference championship, but they're going to play the winner of Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, they split the series. I think Kentucky will beat them this time. And I think Kentucky will cut down the nets in Nashville, Tennessee on Sunday. Gotcha. Alex, who you got? Mm. Well, I went to Missouri, but I have to go with Tennessee because they're the only 10 I see. (laughs) Man, I thought you were going to pick the Gamecock. There's a team called the Gamecocks? South South Carolina. Carolina. Deal. Like fans hold up signs that say Go Cox. Uh, I'm sticking with the only 10 I see. Okay. How about everybody wins and it's the Gamecocks versus 10 I see in the conference championship game. And then Missouri comes in with a steel chair. Oh, it's lit. (laughs) Yeah. They knock out the ref and it turns into a steel cage match. Why is everything made out of steel in the WWE? (laughs) Good question. Makes it more real. <laughs> I think it's because they they want to sound more American, and they don't realize that America mostly buys Russian steel. Oh man! And then Toby Keith comes out and sings that "Made in the USA" song. <laughs> uh, so moving on to the Big Ten, aka the uh, Big Fourteen. The Big Fourteen. I, when I Google Big Fourteen bracket, nothing came up. <laughs> why can't i find the big 10 search big 14 maybe it'll work no i mean on, on the espn page i'll shoot you a link over what the hell why do i not see it on here check the discord chat all right, all right that that works okay thank you <laughs> um so uh it's not funny what I really need to take a shit before we start recording <laughs> oh <laughs> um just checking to make sure we're still recording okay cause we've been going for 30 minutes and at that point I would just say fuck it I'm going to bed um <laughs> uh we got Michigan State at number one for the big 10 big 14 tournament um Purdue number th- two Michigan number three Wisconsin number four how crazy is it that Michigan and Michigan State played Saturday for the Big Ten regular season title? Michigan State won, and Michigan jumped from number two back to number three. And you got Purdue. That's crazy. Purdue yeah. at number two. That game literally changed a lot there. Yeah. Maryland number five. Forgot Maryland exists. Um, uh, yeah, since they left I the was A's born there. In Maryland? Yeah, in Baltimore. Oh, man traitors should never left the acc (laughs) exactly why did they leave the acc that them and virginia was always a major rivalry i would say big 10 big 10 offered them more money Uh, okay Uh, that or they were still broken up about the colts moving to indianapolis yeah highly highly probable um but i'm going michigan state michigan in the championship with michigan state winning that's my exact views i think michigan State is rolling. They're going to beat Michigan in the finals again. Tom Izzo has a team that could win the national championship this year. They are that good. Um, and they're playing good at the right time. I'm He's ho- one of the best motivators there is. I'm hoping that they are a number one seed and they're on the other side of the tournament than Virginia. I feel they would match up well because like Michigan State and Virginia play the exact same way. Yeah. Interesting, but I don't want to see that game. Until but they're the, not going to beat it all until the final four. If Michigan State wins the Big Ten, because they'll find their way into a number one seed with a Big Ten win. Okay, so you you think that with them winning and Gonzaga losing, that Gonzaga is probably going to be a number two? 
They Gonzaga will probably sneak into a number one somehow. I don't know how, but what's going to benefit them is that these ACC teams are going to beat each, up on each other. Like Virginia's locked in there. They're locked in. Maybe, maybe not a number one overall if they lose. If they win, they got it for sure. They're going to be a number one seed. Um, the other three is going to be the difficult part is because North Carolina, Duke, they're going to, if Virginia wins the ACC, those two are going to have to lose at some point. If Michigan State runs the table, obviously they jump over one or both of them. They Michigan State could end up the overall number two, possibly, if they jump over Gonzaga as well. And Kentucky's right. right there, too. This is just a cluster. It, the, we don't know who's going to be number one except for Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> you That's keep good. saying who's going to be number one, but I have to ask the question. How many number one seeds are there? Four. Number uh, number four. Not number four. Four. <laughs> there are four number ones? Yeah. It's, so you it's, don't have to worry about who's number one because you get four different number ones. Right. There's four. What it is is they have four different regions, the east, usually the south, the west, and the north or southeast. They'll do something weird like that. And anyway, there's like a number one of each region, and that's how they do that until they get like four number ones, four number twos, all the way to four number 16s, which are the four worst teams in the tournament. This and sounds like a participation tro- trophy thing. Like, oh, don't worry. We can all be number one. <laughs> usually that's the case. Now, last year it was different. BC beat Virginia, but usually the 16th seeds are like, hey, you're in the tournament. Thanks for coming. You're going to get get killed by like 60 points. Unless you're huh. UMBC, basically. Um, so with the Big 12, I mean the Big 10. I mean the Big 14. I mean the Big 12. Um, Kansas State, number one. Oh, did you, I think you skipped my pick for the Big 10. Oh, oh my, yes, we did. My bad. We got off on another tangent. Sorry, Alex. Who, Alex, who um, do you have? I'm picking Gerbers because if they can get out of their rut, I think they can beat Maryland. Who? And and upset. Gerbers? <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. Ru- Rugers. Oh, Rutgers. Rutgers. <laughs> Gerbers? <laughs> Sorry, the text is really small. Alex, do we need to call nine one one? Are you having a stroke over there? <laughs> it's the Rutger, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The scar, <laughs> the that sounds like a type of baby food. You don't want the corn huskers to go. Well, the Indians called it maize. <laughs> So Nebraska Court Huskers, I mean, I mean the Rutgers Scarlet Knights is your pick. The yep Ger- Gerber babies get their get out of their rut and Gers to the finals. All right. And they beat and they beat Purdue. I guess your alma mater. I didn't go there. That's oh that's Bill. Bill's alma. Mater. Yeah, Bill. I went to Mizzou. Oh. Um. And I didn't pick them to win either. <laughs> so uh big 12 i mean big 10 uh kansas state is the number one uh college basketball was having a field day with this especially since kansas is number three texas tech is number two texas tech and kansas city Can- kansas city kansas state actually shared the regular season and i, and I still don't understand why they call it sharing Sharing is not caring. I'm glad caring. we can share Virginia. I'm glad we can no, share. No, no. Even more people get to be number one. Is this a snowflake sport? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is, to be honest. Um, no contact. So, That's a foul. So, Kansas State, Texas Tech, championship. I got uh, Bob Knight coming out and whipping people with his whip. He's back. Yeah. I'm going. Don't sleep on the number three, Kansas Jayhawks. They're going to win this tourney and beat their rival Kansas State Wildcats in the final. Don't say Jayhawk to me. <laughs> why? Why? Why, why can't we say Jayhawk? First of all, I went to the University of Missouri. Second of all, it's a fate bird. It's not even a real animal. It's like they might as well be called the Kansas Unicorns. <laughs> We're going to get so much hate mail from Kansas fans. 
Oh yeah, well maybe they'll tie their hate mail to a Jayhawk and have it fly to you and never. <laughs> the fake bird. <clears throat> I peed myself. A and little what bit is with rock that. chalk? Jayhawk. That just sounds like a stroke victim's last words. <laughs> is, that what, is that what? Um, I uh, no, I can't do it. I was about to say something, but it would have been very inappropriate. Um, so who do you have? Went in, Alex. Me? I think the Bayer Aspirin Warriors. Okay. All right. Who's that? Ba- Baylor. Baylor. You were asking about Baylor last time. Uh. Hold on. <laughs> I got a very inappropriate text message, and I'm trying to process it. Uh. I was asking about Bayer last time. Yeah, you're asking about Baylor last time. Did they make the aspirin there? <laughs> no, that's Germany. <laughs> they make the they make Bayer aspirin in Germany. Yeah, and they ship a basketball team all the way over here to be in the tournament. Yes, Nazi they super win. soldiers. If they can, if they can get over the jet lag, they win the tournament. <laughs> I like it. As long as Kansas loses, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, West Coast, Gonzaga lost. Gonzaga was the number one seed and lost to St. Mary's, which is a hospital. Wait, what is the name of the conference? West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to watch some black basketball. Let's whack off. It's just a whack fastball. Is that the name of the conference? Yeah. The West, the WAC conference? Yeah. I thought it would have been the WCC, the West Coast Conference. There is, I think there's already a WCC Division 2 or something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the one, there is one. It's called just the w, West Coast, I guess. Well, okay, so... No, no, no. W- well, Zagas is the WCC. Yeah. Wax, that, like, Boise State and yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. All right, so my joke is null and void. Um, what? So New Mexico State and them, they get whacked. Yeah. Um. So, knee-jerk predictions. Should we touch the Pac-12 real quick? That's kind of our last major Who cares about the Pac-12? Seriously? <laughs> All right, well... I'll go ahead and just say it. Um, I'm I'm picking UCAL. Oh, win. the the worst team in the. Yes, <laughs> I'm pulling an Alex. Hmm. I'll take so what you're saying is that you're Jersey. making a very educated guess. Yes, very educated guess. I found a bracket that only shows the team logos. That's not going to do me any good. <laughs> For Pac-12, who do you think looks the coolest? Yeah, Just go I with think that. Pepperdine. <laughs> Pepperdine is uh, West Coast. They're Spicy. actually all, they're already out, but we will accept your answer for the Pac-12. Winner. They lost. Yeah. Yes, but we will take that. They may come back with a steel chair. <laughs> okay, I'll pick a different one. Uh, uh, what's Lemu? I don't know. It's not a team in the back to Elf. They're so, number four. Lemu. Whoa. Breaking NFL news. Le'Veon Bell at min- dropping a rap album. Two minutes to tell us what team he signed with. It's a mixtape. Well, that's not going to make hair by the time we... we that's have- the most... Is that not the most Le'Veon news ever, though? So we have, to, this team? we have to listen to the mixtape in order to find out what team he's on? Yes. The answer is no. I don't care where he plays then. <laughs> so they, I guess they were right. Like when they said he um, he had a team twelve hours ago, and like it was taking so long because he had to make a tape. <laughs> He's like, hold on, I got to step into the studio for a minute. Can you hold off on announcing this multi-million dollar signing you got? Give me about twelve hours, Adam Schefter. Yeah. Do you think that it sounds weird, like the the wave runner bouncing off the? off the water when he's trying to rap. <laughs> yes. Um rivals have switched places in the Lenore. So, yeah, um 
Who? What about the Horizon Conference Championship? I think that already happened. Yeah. Oh. North Kentucky won it. They beat Wright State. I guess they were the wrong state. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Moving on to knee-jerk reactions for the tournament. Tournament selection is not until Sunday, but we'll just we'll just give our knee jerk preview. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give my final four. I got uh, Alex. You like this? I got Colgate out of the, the east. Toothpaste. <laughs> yes, uh, out of the west. I have Harvard. Out of the South, I have VCU. <laughs> out of the Midwest, I have uh, Sam Houston State. That's your final four for what? The tournament. The, the whole tournament? The whole tournament. What? Or the other tournaments. There's a bunch of tournaments. Well, the, the main tournament. The big one? The big one. March Madness. Yes. How come we hadn't heard of Colgate yet? <laughs> because I don't know. I don't know why we didn't hear of Colgate. The... We talked about all the other conference tournaments. How come Colgate didn't win any of those? So you have to win a conference tournament to they... get to the final. <laughs> yes. They won the Patriot tournament. Oh no, they're no, they're playing. That's a... They're playing. Actually, sorry, they haven't won the tournament yet. They play Wednesday night against Bucknell. So by the time this airs, they'll have decided. But ESPN's given it to... They're predicting Colgate to win, and I'm predicting Colgate to make the Final Four. And that's the bottom Hello. line. Because Stone Cold said so. That was weird you like cut out for a second. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. <laughs> I will share a lot Love of my it. takes next week when we actually get the bracket because it's it's hard to tell. Without you got to give your knee jerk reaction. <laughs> Northeastern. Knee jerk what? Northeastern. Northeast. Oh, your final four. Oh God, I don't know because I don't know who's the. the, the All major. right, be using Joel Nardi's bracketology. Okay, let me pull up the latest bracketology. Bracketology is but, what? Um, what Luke Perry last said. What? I'm just now reading that. Who's Luke Perry? <laughs> Not touching that one. <laughs> You're the one who posted it in the chat. It was Brock supposed to be Hawk, anonymous. Jayhawk. It was supposed to be secret. Okay. Um, going by Joe Lenardi. Just a minute ago. We'll pretend that never happened. Um, I will take Virginia. Okay. I... Alex, by the way, I sent you the link. If you didn't see it. Oh, I've already got it figured out. I didn't need it. Oh, uh, okay. Virginia. <laughs> Thank you, though. Virginia, Florida State. Virginia, Florida State. Okay. Um, Michigan State. And Duke. I think this will change by next week, but that's my final four. Okay. Based off what he's got. Okay. All right. Um, Alex, who do you got? Uh... Villanova. I assume they, that's where all the villains are. So you got to have a bad guy in the tournament. That's Philadelphia. They're from Philadelphia. Villanova's in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. Villain Villanova. Miami of everywhere. Once they've all combined into their super team. Uh. Is that like when Vegeta and Goku? Have did to, the fusion dance? Yeah, I think Voltron was more okay. Was closer metaphor. Okay. Um, well, I mean, hey, like they never show what what could have possibly happened if Goten and Trunks and Goku and Vegeta merged into one. Uh, 
That's true. It would have been weird and bad. <laughs> and it probably is what Miami of everywhere looks like. <laughs> and then uh, I'm picking Duke because they have uh, the torn shoe guy, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the reason why you should never wear uh, Nike shoes. Yep. Nice and shoe. then uh, Javier from the West. <laughs> Javier? X A V I E R. Xavier, like X Men. Yeah. No. <laughs> Javier. <laughs> okay. I'm going. They're number one seed, so they're probably going to beat Torn Shoes, Miami of Everybody, and the villains of Ova. <laughs> I like it. Who wins it all? Javier. <laughs> don't mess don't mess with the Spanish when it comes to hoops. Yeah. They've been playing it since the Aztec days. I got some pretty good Wednesday night mailbag questions for Alex here in a little bit. Oh hell yeah. Alright. Um so yeah, so that's that's our our knee jerk reactions without the uh, actual uh, list coming out. Uh, Next week we'll have some uh, big takes. Yeah, be a lot easier to figure out. Right, because we'll actually have the bracket out. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to mailbag. Uh, let him rip, Logan. All right, so. <laughs> From Tuesday in the Hoobastank fan club. <laughs> Thoughts on... Hang on. Headphones fell out. Sorry, guys. Um, Thoughts on the St. P- Petersburg IndyCar race being the most watched IndyCar opener ever, Alec? Uh, have you ever seen that movie Idiocracy? Yes. And you know the deal there is that people that are dumb continue to breed while smart people don't breed enough and then eventually everybody's really stupid. (laughs) You're familiar with the movie? And everybody's favorite show is that guy getting hit in the balls? Yes. Yeah, well, the show that came on before that was whatever these people were watching with race cars. (laughs) I like it. And you said that was from the Hoobastank fan club? (laughs) Yes. That tells me that's the reason they're crawling in the dark, and I'm glad I'm not going the same direction because that would be out of control. I'm running away. <laughs> I, uh, on a realistic note, let me take uh, let me answer on this because I might be the only one that does watch IndyCar from time to time. <laughs> I watch more NASCAR than IndyCar. I'll yeah, tell you that. I'm a NASCAR guy, but uh... my grandmother dated Dale Earnhardt Sr. Oh my! In Any high good school. Story? Uh, his teeth smelled bad. <laughs> I figured all he did was just smoke cigarettes. Wait, so time. so is she from North Carolina? No, she's from Ohio. Oh, okay. He probably got around because like he went track to track even in high school. His dad was a driver. Interesting. Ralph Earnhardt. Very interesting. I'm just assuming. Was... I'm just assuming that she's telling the truth. I don't have pictures. <laughs> My grandmother could be a lying woman. <laughs> so what's interesting about that is the last time I went to go visit Logan, um, we went past a Earnhardt dealership, um, and I asked Logan, I said, does that mean that Dale Jr. owns that? We never Did we find out? No, but I did find out later by listening to Dale Jr.'s podcast that um, he worked there as a teenager fixing cars. Fun little fact. So <laughs> he did say he is. <laughs> You did say is Dale Earnhardt's head <laughs> in the place like Futurama? <laughs> in a jar. <laughs> yeah, just sitting there when you walk in. <laughs> and he's just like, hi, I'm Dale Earnhardt. You like racing? Oh, good I like Lord. it when they turn left. <laughs> Would you like a Coke? <laughs> So what was your second question? Because you were said you had to ask me because you are the only person that watches F1. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I was going to say, I don't know what to say. I think it's 
IndyCar sport. Um, they've kind of been not, back in the 60s and the 70s. They were the top auto racing um, league in the United States, and NASCAR kind of took over and has dominated since. It's awesome to see them get some viewers. I think they hit 500K on the sports app, the NBC sports app. Nice. Which that's really good for like th- them because – they they don't really get on TV like they used to. I know when I was a kid, they used to come on ESPN and ABC and stuff. Now they really just they just do the Indy 500. It seems like, um, but that's really good for them. Um, I'd like to see them bring a sh- race back to Charlotte. They haven't did a race in Charlotte since the 90s, like when cars were like flying into the stands and killing people. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> and they haven't returned to Charlotte since. Wait, they haven't been to Charlotte since the 90s? They have two races in Richmond a year, but they don't have any races in Charlotte. No, no, because of that incident. Like, I, I think it may have been something with Char- Charlotte Motor Speedway or something. Like, uh. I, or maybe it's just the traumatizing past. I don't know, but... Um, I mean, wasn't that suck, though? You're sitting there watching a race and a tire flies at you and kills you or a car flies into the stands? The sweet I guess, I guess release of vehicular, uh, d- you know, destruction. Decapitation. I guess, I guess it would happen so quick you wouldn't even know, though. Yeah. Yeah, go, they go really fast. <laughs> All right, on to our <laughs> next question. I will say, uh, I think the F1, uh, F1 stuff is cooler than NASCAR because they turn multiple directions and tracks have different shapes. Uh, and on that alone, you could decide it. But if NASCAR decides to put concession stands in the middle of the racetrack so that you have to run across <laughs> while the car after the cars go by to get your hot dog and beer and then run back across, uh, then it is the coolest sport there is. What about if they made Mario Kart a real thing and they added items? Um, I think we're closer to death race as a piece, as a people <laughs> where you're hitting pedestrians. <laughs> With like, especially if they're automated cars, and you put a whole bunch of pedestrians on the track and make the robots decide who lives and who dies. <laughs> also, shout out to Kyle Busch over the weekend, who 198 race, including Xfinity Series, uh, Truck Series, and the NASCAR Series. He has two There's a away. Truck series. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't think that it could get more redneck, but now you're telling me they're racing pickup trucks. Yes. No, next to the tractor pole. <laughs> yes. That's but, uh, awesome. He is two wins away from all-time great Richard Petty, who has the most wins in NASCAR history with 200. He, Kyle Busch is young. He's obviously going to break this and become one of the best ever. Um, congrats to him. Now let me roll is on to our next the question. Is that score? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. He's kind of Eminem. He's he has a wrapper on the side of his vehicle. M and M's, the candy. <laughs> Which one of his albums? No, 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 Skittle, Skittle. Sorry. What? No, M and M's. Don't get mixed up. You're gonna freak out your taste buds. Wait, Wait. actually, he sponsors both of them, Skittles and M and M's. The, but they're who? Do you think he mixes them in a bowl and in, in his house and just has people grab handfuls? And be like, <laughs> but your funeral. probably. He probably does because he's like the bad guy of NASCAR. Wait, but oh, he's the, he's the Villanova. Yeah. Wait, but I swear I thought that he had the he does drive M and M's peanut M and M's uh, car. He does. Um, he this past week he won in the Skittles car in Phoenix, but previously this year he has drove M and M. Okay, I have an idea. So he switches you should it make up. the car shaped like the uh, the thing that's sponsoring the car. <laughs> So, like, the Gillette car can be a razor-shaped vehicle, and then, uh, like, you know, the uh, cortisol can be a pill. Then, like, uh, if Blue Chew gets a car, it could just look like a Flintstone vitamin rocketing down the highway. Can we can we hashtag get Blue Chew at NASCAR? Come on, let's get us a NASCAR Blue Chew car, guys. We had Mark Martin driving Viagra when he was um, in NASCAR. Why not Blue Chew? Right, that reminds me of the meme. It's a orangutan driving or riding a tricycle, and it says taking three um, uh, gummies, vitamin gummies, instead of two, and then it shows a kid running away crying, and it says, <laughs> and it has the caption "bullies." <laughs> <laughs> What, who sponsors Danica Patrick? She is go, gone now. Go Daddy. Would, 
Nobody would sponsor her because she just kept wrecking. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome! What? So she would have driven like a she would have driven a crashing website. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't GoDaddy her sponsor though? Yes, it was. Exactly. That's why it's a crashing oh, website, no. and also she's running into the walls. <laughs> this is one of the best episodes we've ever put together. <laughs> I might. Yeah, I think it's better than last week's. Um, let me um let me put in our next question. We'll let Alex answer first. If prime Michael Jordan was playing on the current Lakers that LeBron is on, would these Lakers be better with MJ, or would they be about the same as they are with LeBron James? Are you saying MJ instead of LeBron? Like prime MJ that won all the championships if they swapped him and LeBron didn't exist with the Lakers. Uh, but Kobe still existed? No. <laughs> So in this universe, Kobe was never born. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious question. We'll, we'll say Kobe's never born in this situation. Because Kobe basically is Michael Jordan. <laughs> he's like he's he played exactly the same. Just Wait, they're they're not, identical. I, I think what Logan's trying to say is is that um, so Kobe still exists. Kobe still played for the Lakers when he did, but. But he retired. Right. So Let's, Prime Michael this, Jordan teleported roster. Right. Teleported in time and from LeBron, like, 1996 and replaced LeBron James. Would they be a better team than they okay. are right. with LeBron? So I here's why I fall on the issue. I think LeBron brings a lot to the table as a uh, as a leader on the mental side of the game. And it seems like he gets let down on that a lot. But as far as his leadership skills in terms of his production, I think Michael Jordan was a greater producer. Uh, But I have to wait to answer the question fully until we see (laughs) LeBron James's full version of, uh, of Space Jam. And when you can compare Michael Jordan's Space Jam to LeBron's Space Jam, whichever one is better, I think will tip the scales in that direction. And ultimately, I mean, it's going to come down to can LeBron lead the tunes like Jordan did to beat the mon- the mon- the Monstars? And- I.e. the Golden State Warriors. Yes, yes. Um, also, and, I also forgot- uh, Oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead. Sorry, I, I gotta, I gotta finish this because it's vital. Like if, Lucy. if LeBron plays basketball and then goes and plays baseball and then comes back and wins another ring, he's definitively better than Michael Jordan. Oh, no doubt about it. That would be amazing. Um, Who would he play for? In baseball? Yeah. Well, Jordan played for the Chicago White Sox Barons. Um, heck, he might play for my hometown Hickory. Hickory, what? Sorry, you cut out. Yeah. What was it? The, the Hickory Crawdads. Is that the AAA Hickory or double A? Flavored Crawdads. Single A. Single here A. In Hickory, North Carolina. We we have the Flying Squirrels oh. of Richmond. Um, I think they're double A. We had the Richmond Braves, which were triple A. Um, which Shipper Jones actually played for at one one time. <laughs> Fun fact: We had a minor league uh, basketball team here in the mid two thousands or early two thousands called the Hickory Nuts, and the slogan was <laughs> <laughs> the slogan was literally "Show them your nuts" and it's like a squirrel. Wow was that a was that a D league team? Uh, it wasn't even. It was like a Z league. Like it was like thing. It was like it a, was like local high school team players, uh, like older. Like it didn't draw at all. It was like a big three uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Speaking of which, is big three coming back? Twenty nine. Yes, yes. They they draw really good ratings. Um, I also want to say that was the question that we just got about MJ was from who 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 from the Hooba State fan club. <laughs> Oh man, he was from the Hoobastank fan club too. Yeah, oh, and I have something to say about him. I also got another question here. Um, 
Or should um, I deliver my message to the Hoobastank fan club of who, 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 who? Yes, this is um, this is from uh, the Hoobastank fan. Club. And by 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 the way, I I'll be right back. I gotta go pee. Okay. It okay. Is my message to who, 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 who is that if I were you, I'd be inside of you and it would hurt, but I'm gonna disappear because I'm born to lead. It's my <laughs> turn. Remember me. <laughs> Also from the Hoobastank fan club, we got a baseball question. Okay. From anal mukbang superstar. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to know why Fulty, pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, will only have 10 wins and Julio Tehran is going to have a revival season. Do you First, answer? can you say that? Can you say that username again? <laughs> anal. <laughs> I'm sorry, anal what? <laughs> anal. <laughs> anal mukbang superstar. Well, to you, anal mukbang superstar, I say that you're more beautiful and you could have the first of me until I'm up and gone, but I don't think I love you, and I'm going to remain incomplete without a fight. Because <laughs> I'm sick of hanging on. What do you think about Fulty, the pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, and Julio Tehran for the Atlanta Braves? Do you think Julio Tehran will bounce back? Baseballs don't bounce, and neither does Tehran. <laughs> I'll give a realistic answer. I'm going to... Fult... Oh. Breaking news. Le'Veon Bell has signed with the New York Jets. I knew it. <laughs> so that's kind of that anticlimactic. Uh, <laughs> that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I was hoping he'd be like something random. Like, like the Browns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Miami, like Nixon. Um... um I think that uh, Fulte's gonna he's gonna get over ten wins back and get ten or eleven wins. Um, I'm a big fan of Julio Tehran. Um, whenever I played MLB the Show, I would always trade for him to the Detroit Tigers. Nice. He, he would be my guy that we, I would always build around. Um, I think Julio's gonna bounce back. I think the Braves are gonna make a run at the World Series this year. Um, they're probably going to fall just shy. I feel like they're a year winning the whole thing. I think at the end of the year, you're going to be looking at the New York Yankees winning the World Series. And I hope that makes my friend Matt happy. It's going to happen. Get ready. You're winning a championship. Another one. <laughs> Any more questions from the Hoobastank fan club? The Hoobastank fan club has nothing else for us this week. All right. Well, so closing where we are. Closing thoughts for this week. Oh, did did you hear? I don't know if you got back in time. Le'Veon Bell signed with the New York Jets. Oh, uh, I don't really care. That's fine. <laughs> like that doesn't help them, or I mean, it helps them, but like it's like they're still the Jets. It's not the Ravens, so it's okay. Right. I really thought he was going to go to the Ravens, just to stick it to the Steelers, but I guess it's not happening. Um, I guess uh, you want to go through our takeaways or one random thing we thought about sports for the week alright um, for me I would say my takeaway this week is that the UVA will not lose in the first round of the ACC tournament but they will lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Colgate. My takeaway is <laughs> Bryce Harper signed a 13-year, $330 million contract with the Philadelphia Phillies. And I'm here to tell you why he's the most overrated baseball player in baseball today. Last year, he averaged a 249 batting average. That is not that good with two, 169 strikeouts. 
He has a batting average of 279, which is kind of average. Um, while he does hit some dingers, that is a lot of money for a really good baseball player. What is Mike Trout going to get here in two or three years when he becomes a free agent? Mike Trout is way better than Bryce Harper. I can see Mike Trout being the first $500 million man in sports. Bryce Harper's overrated. That's my take of the My takeaway of the week. In the game of golf, love is a mistake. You putt better with blue balls. If Tiger and uh, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholas, and Rory McElroy have taught us anything, it's that as soon as a golfer gets a love life, he can't obsess over the game enough to stay at the top. And that's why I propose that we castrate any professional ga- uh, golf players. What? I'm all for it. Big fan. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Look it up, sweetheart. I mean, you're not wrong. You putt better with blue balls. Maybe if I remove my balls, I can become the greatest golfer of all time. Makes sense. I, I, sounds, less friction down there on your backswing. Sounds very sound to me. This was great, guys. Thank you for this. This was an awesome podcast. Yeah. We we went, I had a lot of fun. We <laughs> we jumped the shark this week, but I'm totally for it because Alex is obviously a hilarious person. So I'm very happy that he was on this. <laughs> Thank you. Episode. I'm I'm glad that that we are just different from other podcasts. Like, there's other sports podcasts out there that's like all serious. I mean, we're we're talking serious, but it's it's fun important at the same to have fun. Time. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And it's been great. <laughs>